We greet you in the name, the precious name of Jesus Christ on this glorious Sunday morning. A day that God has blessed us with, one that is created. One surely that he wants us to be able to journey through this day that our light shine in the silver day. Call to worship. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with singing. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let's make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. Get ready, 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 get ready
Again, it's Daniel chapter 7, verse 1 through 3. And it reads as follows. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream. And visions passed through his mind as he was lying in bed. He wrote down the substance of his dream. Daniel said, in my vision at night, I looked. And there before me were the four winds of heaven, churning up the great sea. Four great beasts, each different from the others, came up out of the sea. May God bless and edify to our hearts the reading of this holy word come from Daniel chapter 7, verse 1 through 3. Yeah. <laughs> 
We just want to take a few moments prior to going before the Lord in prayer to receive all our prayer requests that may be on your hearts and minds today, as well as praise reports. Those who are tuning in, just say them out loud to yourself while we hear Lighthouse. Offer our prayer request unto God. I'd like to give honor and praise to God for being such a good God and thank Him for all the blessings that He's bestowed upon us from this time last Sunday morning all to the week and up until this present time. Just thank you, Lord. I do come asking for prayers for um, <coughs> starting with all my uncles, and my aunts, and all my first cousins, and my um, second and third to the heaven bottom and all the um people on the 200 block of Ashley street especially those people that came out on friday as cold as it was friday morning they came out and they helped me to prepare and to distribute the food that you had provided for us for the community and i just thank you lord for that and that's a special blessing blessings for them special blessings for each household um one person came up with a complaint and before she got in the door she started talking because now let me just pray that whatever it is that is going on with her that whatever you would have us to do lord you will lead us from in our heart give us the tools that we know that you will provide for us to help her we also ask but i also ask special prayers for my husband um, my friend my pastor to continue to keep him healthy and blessed with all the strength to do the things that you would have him to do my children all three of them collectively, all four of them individually, and my grandchildren, Lord, you know all about them, and we just ask and praise for your name. Continue to bless those people, guide the judge's hand as they prepare the paperwork that needs to be done for both Pesatelli and myself. We just thank the Lord for good health and continue to praise your name. Certainly, our absentee members on the throne, 
that you followed my friend in that, that you might through the working of the Holy Spirit show them that what they've been certain answer show has been right before them the whole time. Yes, sir. Spring back Lord, to our fold. That you might be able to come and praise and worship God with us. Yes. Also be on the throne, God, our uh, request for God is as we move throughout 2020, as we try to redefine our footprint in this community, what you have us to do and to be about. And just to bring clarity to our mission here. As we look at transitioning to more of a ministry related or outreach ministry related dynamic with White House than what we have been doing in the past. So I want to be my mother and my siblings on the throne. Brother who is still struggling with Parkinson. Sister who is jockeying from her, her own immediate family. Her husband who went to her, her mother going back and forth to our brother. I know it gets tiresome sometimes, but also still working part time. So just give her the strength to do what she needs to do. And just leave all of our members, both near and far, wherever they are. Those who are tuning in, we need some of you on our phone. We certainly thank God for you, for your dedication to be a part of this ministry. With all that said, we want to prepare our hearts and minds to go before our Lord and our Creator in prayer. Must God bear the cross alone? And all the world will be free. But there's a cross for everyone, and there's a cross just for me. Yes. Gracious Father, we come once again in the precious name of your Son Jesus. Lord, just as we are, Lord, the humble souls until just and mighty God. Just thank you, Lord, for another day's journey. Thank you, Lord, for the cross that we must bear. Even as Jesus bear his cross up to the Golgotha's hill. Yes, we know, Lord, we must bear our crosses. And we thank you for them because they keep us focused. They keep us on track. They keep us that we're leaning on your outstretch. On. You keep us following. Ever needing to be closer to you. You keep those of us who are patiently bearing our crosses in tune to your will for our lives. We know, Lord, and recognize that we many times don't want to bear the cross that you have placed upon each and every one of us. But we know, Lord, that it's a necessary thing. That without it, we would do all sorts of things that are against your will, but with it, yes, yes. we know, Lord, we're bound to you. The only one that can bear this cross when it gets too hard for us to bear. 
We are reminded of that pulling up the footprints in the sand. And we are joyful and thankful that for all of us, when that time comes when the cross is no longer manageable for us, yes, Lord. that you pick it up, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That you lift us up and you carry us the rest of the way down the road of life. So, Father, we just thank you this morning for being the kind of God that you are, the rain's high and it's low. God that constantly blesses us even when we don't stand in the need. We just ask, Father, that you would just be with us throughout the midst of this service. And as we lift every prayer, every praise, every hallelujah up to you, Lord, that it might be pleasing in your sight. But we are reminded, Father, that we certainly have not been the very best that we could have been this past week. That many of us have fallen prey to the temptations from the evil one. That we ask ever so humbly for your forgiveness. We ask, Lord, that you might cleanse us once again. We ask, Lord, that you might strengthen us where we are weak. That we might be able to continue down this road of life. That we might be able to stand strong each and every time Satan throws temptations our way. But we know, Lord, that he wants nothing more than to sidetrack Yes, yes. To take our minds off of you, Father. Yes, Lord. To have us to do things that we know in our heart of hearts is or wrong. Well, Father, we just ask you yes, that you might undergird us right now. <clears throat> that you might do what only you, that you alone, are certainly able and willing to do for each and every one of us that calls you, Lord. Yes. Bless us, Father, throughout this day. Prepare us, Father, for this coming week. We just praise you, Lord. We just look, we just lift your name up. On high, Lord, we just ask that when it's all said and done with this service, that something said, something done, or something that was lifted up might have truly reign glory to your holy and righteous name. Watch over all of our children, Lord, our relatives, both here. In the south, up north, you know where all of them are right now. Yes. We continue, Lord, to leave Denisia and, and the boards on the throne as they continue on, Lord, without even their life. Yes. Continue to lift up Reggie that you might provide that kidney they need. Yes. Or that you might just do for each and every one of your children. Will they stand in, in the need of Bless my family in the South. We're so mourning the loss of a husband and father. Look, this be for that Lord. Yes, Jesus. What is missing in their lives. That they might be able to keep their chin held up high, Lord. And Move on down the road of this life. Being thankful for the blessing of the husband and the father. And be thankful that they no longer have to suffer. But just truly, Lord, thanking you for the time that they were able and we're blessed to spend with them. Bless us, Father. Strengthen and keep us all. Watch all go downtown as they wrap up. The convention, Lord, the International Association of Blacks in Dance. We just pray, Lord, that all is going well. 
that has been a joyous and fabulous time for all the dance groups that were now. Bless them, Father, strengthen and keep them all. And grant them, Lord, travel and mercy back to their various destinations. For it is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. We come to the time when we get back to God. Some as He has blessed us. We just say to you, especially those of you, that we are called to get back as God has blessed us. We are just prayerful that, that you will give unto the White House a little bit from what God has blessed you with. So our ministry here will be able to continue on that we might be able to continue being used by God. So if the Spirit is moving you and you desire to be a blessing to the House, you make us on the screen and just pray that you will use it and be able to bless us that our ministry will be able to continue to go on. All things of thee, O Lord, and of thine own, and sweet of thee, Amen. As we prepare to listen to the hymns of meditation, just want you to think on our theme as we prepare to celebrate, to commemorate, to remember Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, whose birthday we are celebrating and recognizing on tomorrow. A theme is simply a man of dreams. A man of dreams. Long, 
Listen, y'all. It's gonna be. It's gonna be alright. It's gonna be. It's gonna be alright. Said it long as long as I can see. It's In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, <clears throat> Daniel had a dream and visions passed through his mind as he was lying in bed. He wrote down the substance of his dream. Daniel said, in my vision at night I looked and there before me were four winds, the four winds of heaven, churning up the great sea. Four beasts, each different from the others, came up out of the sea. A man with a man of dreams. A man <coughs> of dreams. Dreams like how are um, so much a part, or better said, are very much a part of who we are as human beings. Some people dream more than others, while others may not dream at all. But the common thread for all of us is the capacity to dream. Some of the dreams people have are pleasant and often reveal numbers they play at their life. Some have to do with relatives who have passed away, while others are traumatic by nature and are often considered nightmares. But the bottom line is that we all are people of dreams. Yeah. Right, wrong, good, or bad. In our scripture lesson today, we find one of the most talked about dreams outside of John's vision on the island of Patmos. For those of you familiar with this passage, you would know that Daniel's dream or vision is a complicated dream taking up the whole of chapter 7. The long and short of Daniel's dream or his vision is that it's centered around four beasts that represented four empires that would rise up on the earth and dominate countries and kingdoms of the life. And the details of each piece that represented the rules of those kingdoms. We find that in the second half of chapter 7 that it lends itself to the explanation of Daniel's dream. So we are able to see lighthouse that dreams are very much a part of the fabric of mankind. Since the Old Testament times, whether initiated by God or just normal dreams, it is certainly not a new experience that has just happened upon the, the scene. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was a man of dreams, but his dream or his vision had nothing to do with world domination, but rather with the struggles and status of the African American people. <clears throat> A people hated, despised, and poorly treated just because of the color of their skin. Amen. His dream made up the speech on the march of on Washington, D.C. in August of 1963. 
which took us from the time of the end of slavery up to that present time. Dr. King's speech, I have a dream pointed towards the future of our people and what God had revealed to him. It's interesting, Lighthouse, that Dr. King started his speech. Hmm. At the time of the Emancipation Proclamation. Why didn't he start it early on? Why didn't he start his speech at the time of slavery? Hmm. Although our people Sought freedom from the time they were herded like cattle into slave ships. Headed to America, Central America, the Caribbean, and South America. The real fight for freedom began in earnest after the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation. Interesting that Dr. King would start his speech there rather than from the very beginning. Because a real fight took place at that particular time after the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation. Amen. This dream lighthouse traced the journey of a people treated less than dirt. As if they had no value other than as forced laborers. A people often beaten, killed, persecuted used and abused, and it lays out for those who dare to truly listen, the terrible things inflicted upon a once proud and determined people. Dr. King's dream pointed our people towards the future, a time they had seen on this mountaintop experience with God, a time of racial equality, a time of economic security. And a time when we will be recognized not by the color of our skin, but by the gifts, talent, knowledge, and experience that we bring to the table. Yes, a time, Lighthouse, when we will be recognized as a people truly created people. But the question that we must all ask ourselves today is whether we are still focused on reaching the promised land. Are we earnestly climbing the mountain of opportunity and respectability? Or are we still stuck at the base of the mountain crying out, woe is me? While people of all nationalities continue in their attempts to scale the highest mountain peaks known to man, we as African American people need not to concern ourselves with climbing the mountains, the likes of Mount Everest and Mount Kilimanjaro. But rather we must concern ourselves climbing a mountain, a mountain that continuously lies before us, which has become more difficult than ever to climb. But climb we must. If you are to bask in the mountaintop experience of Dr. King. It is time, a lighthouse, and those who are tuning in, to rally our wagons of determination, self esteem, and respect, and begin to fight for our just due. Embracing the mindset and pride of our ancestors who would not stop and would not quit until they broke free of the bonds that held them back. And then and only then can be shot with a unified and strong voice. In the spirit of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King's mountaintop experience, free and lives, free and lives, thank God Almighty, we are free at last.
Send the invitation to the discipleship. As a music play, we just want you to think about your, your relationship to you. Think about what we got Spiritual back to him. Is that an opportunity? Do we have any one who is tuning in? God, I'm my best friend. That's their seed. I'll see if you simply come by way of baptism. Do we have any one who is, who is tuning in, who has been away, or in between churches? You say, don't stay away. Consider making a lighthouse. Your church home, or one of the churches in your neighborhood, but certainly come back and stay in fellowship with God and with His children. There is much to be had when we fellowship. We're able to share. We're able to support. We're able to do those things that we're called to do as children of God. And for those who may be viewing in that it's been away from Christ a very long time, and someone that spoke to you about this service and you're tuning in, just want to say to you that God stands before you with his arms outstretched, just wanting you to know that that faith that you have so long ago when you first came to him, that it's still there, and it's just suppressed so deeply in your spirit that you no longer recognize that it's there. But God wants you to know that that faith is still there, it's never gone away. And that He's calling you to come to Him by way of rededication of that faith that you still have. But however you do it, God wants you to come while there's still time. There are no more guarantees, there have been guarantees in life. We don't know whether we'll be here to see the next day. And therefore we cannot put off tomorrow. Put off until next week or next month. For several months down the road or even next year. We'll be here and should do today. So the call goes out. To accept Christ, the call goes out to rededicate yourself back to Christ. However you do, God understand, standing before you, his arms stretched out, beckoning to you to come back unto him. With that, we want to prepare for our closing, our benediction. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. In church, Amen. Amen.